So I'm not going to explain the inferior alveolar nerve block. I already recorded a video for that. This is a partially impacted suit. So I have to give an incision to take it out. For the incision, I'm going to give infiltration at the site of incision. So I'm depositing the LS. So this local anesthetic solution is with adrenaline. Vasoconstrictor to it. I'm depositing the local anesthetic solution as an infiltration so that there is less bleeding while giving incision. Okay, numbness feel more. Okay, and uh, what about the tongues? Do you feel numbness at the tip of the tongue on the left side? Good. So, as always, I'm going to show the patient what actual pain feels like on the opposite side. So, can you see it's over right? Enough? Okay. So the patient has reacted to the pain. Now the patient will be able to differentiate between the pain and pressure. Okay. Now tell me. Now this was for long buckle. Now in the premolar region, I'm going to poke the instrument to check for the inferior alveolar nerve block. Good. Now. Open. Move it up. Here it is. Good. 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 You can see I'm applying firm pressure over the bone. Uh, the idea is to cut through the soft tissue and the periosteum in one single stroke. Now I'm going to give an incision, cravicular incision, sulcular incision you can say, into the sulcus around it. So now another thing that I need to keep in mind is to see the direction where the anterior border of the ramus is. It is somewhat here. Let me show you with the instrument. It is here. So my incision should, distal incision should go in this direction, buckle direction. So this and then along the anterior border of the ramus, I'm going to give an incision. So you can see because of the infiltration, local infiltration that I did for the incision line, there is very minimal bleeding. Now I'm going to push my pointed end of the periosteal elevator under the periosteum as the name suggests, periosteal elevator. You can see the bone being exposed and I'm separating the periosteum from the bone. Now there will be time that your incision, distal incision is not complete. So you can get a little incision in the periosteum and we are releasing distal releasing incision and this to release it properly. So the aim is to have adequate access on the buccal bone and the distal bone which you can see it is quite accessible and visible. Now I'm going to start with the bone guttering part. So what I do is I create bitches in the buccal bone basically in the bone surrounding the tooth. The things with the red buck. Okay, so I'm just creating bitches. Then deepening the bitches. After now, can you see all the bitches surrounding the tooth, buccal, and distal bone? Okay, but what other? So I'm just connecting the bitches. 
Hello, and I'll be too bad. Okay, so I have connected the ditches. You can see. Look at that. I can cut that. Copeland elevator. Just rotating it. And it should come out. You can see it is luxated now. So I'm just elevating it. Give me an instrument or an artery. Okay, okay so. So this is the extraction socket. One important step is to check if there is any periapical granuloma or anything. The radiograph didn't show anything, but uh, to be on the safe side, I'll be curating out just to see if there's any debris inside. There's no debris inside. So as there was no periapical infection, the patient had a little bit of uh, Pericoronitis. There was no periapical infection. So I don't have to use betadine irrigation. I'll just irrigate the socket with force. And as always, the irrigation should be of so much pressure that if there is any debris inside, it should come out. So, first suture is very important. And this I'm going to take a bite in the mesial papilla of the socket. I have taken the bite in the mesial papilla. Now, this step is very important while taking the lingual bite. So, while taking the lingual bite, the direction of the needle should be a little in the mesial direction. I always keep these the, the sutures that are distal to 7 a little longer so that it is easier to hold on to the knot ears. It should be easier to hold on to these and pull them out and cut them. So again distal suture. So take some by this is one. Further, the work. Out oh, this. Give me a tongue depressor and uh, add some pulega. Konok, archi, suction. With this is the closure. I am not going to give any suture at the releasing incision, anterior releasing incision, because. The patient is not going to pull this. This is going to open when we deliberately try to pull it open. Under normal circumstances, this key keep this is closed by this first suture only. So this is going to heal just fine. There's no need to give a suture here. Okay, move on. So there's only two sutures are given and these are more than enough for this. Okay? Why? So as always, I'm going to place a gauze, gauze pressure dressing. Dira dira ban karo. So, ban karo, ban karo. So, you can see the pressure packing is sitting just over the extraction sockets. You can see the gauze is not interfering with the occlusion. The gauze is sitting directly over the extraction socket. The last thing you should keep in mind is that the patient should not leave your dental chair with blood spots on the face. So, always make sure that you clean the patient's face before sending the patient home. <laughs> 